Welcome back to the CNT podcast. My name is Tommy Terrio, and I'm here with Justin Yormark and Tanner Jessen Dalton. So Tanner is a pitcher in the Chicago Cubs organization, drafted in the 17th round two years ago now, I believe, 2019. Yeah, 2019. Mm-hmm. Thank you for coming uh, on the podcast. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I always love having athletes on, but it's awesome when it's from my favorite team too. Appreciate that. Go Cubs. Yeah, I'm wearing my jersey right now. Nah, nah, can't say it. I can't say it. We'll get we'll get you to say it one time. What maybe, maybe. Let's get right on into it. Okay, so first I wanted to just ask you, so like what like who's your hero when it comes I mean, whether it's pitching or just life in general, like that big that like that person guiding you forward or the person you look up to, who is that for you? I have to go with my parents, honestly. Both my parents, mother and father, kind of like the the backbone of why I am the way I am and like what pursued or what made me pursue baseball as a whole. So I'm definitely going with both of them, primarily my mother and I guess equal mother and father. Yeah, that's really cool. I always find it having um, your parents backing you is always very helpful. Yeah, especially, you know, I'm down down away from them for six, seven months at a time. So having a support system to lean on is always nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another question we have is what's your favorite pitch to throw? I would have to go with a fastball up or a splitter down and away. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Um, I go to strikeout pitches. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So a- this, this doesn't really translate at all to pitching in real life, but now will be the show. I like to pitch the fastball up high as well. Very different things, but. Hey, it works. It's the same, it same as far as it, the way it looks. Mm-hmm. What, what do you like? What, what does Velo look like for you on the fastball? <laughs> I'm anywhere between like 91 to 94, give or take. There you go. In there. Yeah. So we're get we're we're getting to the stadium. Walk, walk us through your pregame routine. What do you do to get ready? Uh, I usually show up quite a, quite a bit early, just so I don't feel rushed. Usually, just kind of get my locker set up, get changed, uh, run through about 45 minutes of like mobility, listen to some music, kind of just get the body moving give myself about 15 minutes to just kind of hang out, talk to some teammates, catch up with people, ask questions, sit on my phone, what have you. And then about 45 minutes before stretch, I I go into training room, get a stretch, start getting the body warm and loose after the mobility program, and then get right into our team warm up, team throwing program, and then uh, shag batting practice. The good old pitching life. Yep. Very nice. That's very cool. So, um, why do you love baseball? That's a tough one. It's for starters, it's the competitive edge of it. Obviously, you know, as a pitcher, it's basically you versus the hitter. So that that competition, always different, day to day, inning to inning, batter to batter, that keeps me coming back for sure. And then overall, as a whole, I think the the game itself promotes such a like a community based approach to sports right like every every sports team has like a fan group in a community but you see that a lot more in baseball in terms of like an entire city coming together and I mean I might be a little bit biased because I play baseball but I mean it definitely definitely keeps me coming back thinking that you know like an entire entire community is invested in all of us and how the team is doing and who we are as people not just athletes yeah so this isn't this this isn't written down but I gotta I gotta build on this so before uh, before we started, you said you were in Canada. Mm-hmm. So, like, the, I mean, obviously, there's still baseball culture. The Blue Jays are an offensive powerhouse. But, like, what is baseball culture like up there? Like, how do you, how do you get inspired, like, to do it, at, like, at the young age when it's not – like, I would think it would be, like, hockey, you know, would be more common. Yeah, hockey is definitely the more common denominator in Canada for sure. Um, I mean, my grandfather is the one that got me into it. He played it growing up. So I played it growing up and I kind of just stuck with it. But in terms of like creating like a culture or like a community, there's very limited programs in Canada that really reach out and like try and develop talent, which is, I say very few, there's, there's many, but compared to the States, there's few. So it's kind of, you have to be in the right place um, 
certain places in Western Canada have a couple of programs that can reach out and get people out there. And then obviously if you're around Toronto and greater area around there, baseball is a lot more common because you have the Blue Jays. But that's for me right now, Toronto would be about a 40 hour drive. So yeah, like I'm, I'm a ways away from Toronto. So out on the West side of Canada, you got to kind of either have your family kind of pushing you into it or just have from being a child, being interested and then finding a way to continue to play it. Yeah. So I, I want to build off of your answer of why you love baseball real quick. Um, I've, I always ask this question. It's one of the, I believe it's actually the only one that's been asked in every interview we've done. Um, I always hear from the pitchers, it's the competitiveness because they're in at every play, even if the play is just a foul ball or a strike, it's not even considered a play, which I agree with the, for me, it's the competitive drive is you play 162 games, which out of all the sports I followed consistently is the most games out of them all. Um, I've only just gotten to hockey. I don't know if it's more or less. It's, I don't think it's more or less. Yeah. So, but the, your answer of just having a whole city behind you rooting for the team, I've, I've never heard that, nor have I ever really thought of that. And I thought that was a really cool a reason why you love it. Especially for yeah, Canada. I didn't really get, ex- I didn't really get exposed like the whole to that country until Chicago. The Blue Jays. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't get exposed to that until Chicago, actually. I started following some of the social media platforms um, on Twitter, on Instagram. And uh, they just portray such like a positive environment around the athletes. Like, obviously, there's some things that they're not fans of, but like as a whole what took me by surprise with the amount of support they get from players people community everyone it's truly amazing yeah so we i gotta ask we talked about you know your velo earlier um but like as you're growing up obviously just naturally your arm strength like you just get just more uh, just a stronger arm as you grow up like any tips or tricks or anything else for getting your velo up as a pitcher? Like when you've already, you know, like plateaued in your, like, like if you want to say it physical growth, I guess you could put it that way. I mean, I would say definitely stick in the weight room for sure. Um, that's, that'd be my number one. That'd be where I start with anyone would be even myself. Like I'm definitely not in the, the physical shape that I want to be in, in terms of the utmost goal. Um, but other than that, it's, it's really about learning how your body moves and how your body moves efficiently, right? So each guy is a little bit different. Each pitcher is different. But at the end of the day, it's a matter of finding how efficient you can get your body to move and then obviously your strength through all the range of motion. But I would, I would definitely say those two for sure would be my top. That's very cool. Uh... I was never really a pitcher, so it's a little hard for me to relate. But something I definitely can relate to is uh, baseball cards, which is kind of what my next question is. What was your first reaction when you saw the, a baseball card of yourself? Like not one that you was made for you, like one that was actually produced by card companies or the team of you as a player. It was it was interesting, actually, because so this happened to me when I was in Eugene in 2019. And it was tops. They had created a like a team set of all the cards. And they gave us like a stack of at least 50 of ourselves. And uh, it was it was an odd experience. I'm not gonna lie. Staring at my own face on a on a page by like a card company, not just like parents making it on a Microsoft document or something like that. It was it was interesting. Um, now it sort of seems I don't know, I wouldn't say normal. Cause I've only gotten two of them now, but like it's less of a shock when they end up in my locker just because it's almost like expected that like, if you're on the team, you're going to have a card. I mean, I don't really pay a whole lot of attention to them. I put them in my bag and they usually end up in Christmas cards for family and friends. So that's usually my main use of my cards, but it was definitely a surreal experience. The first time I saw one. Mm-hmm. But I've been trying to get one since you agreed to come on. I always try and have a card. And I actually always try and have an autograph of uh, everyone I interview. So I'll have to try and find one of you or send it to you or find a way to get your autograph for sure. Not a problem at all. I'm pretty sure I have still have a stack of them in my dresser somewhere. Mm-hmm. So I got to I got to ask um, just because like this baseball culture in Canada fascinates me. Um, but like 
like baseball card collecting like did you do it as a kid because i know like a lot of people here stateside do it like just just kids do it as they're growing up but like did you do that when you were growing up hockey cards hockey cards i definitely collected when i grew up not so much baseball like if i if i found one though, obviously like the top players at the time that you don't even have to follow baseball to really know but if i found cards like that i'd throw them in but it was mostly like hockey for most of my childhood and then i actually never met anyone who would like collected baseball specifically i know people that collect all sports cards whether it be football basketball everything they collect the whole genre of sports but i mean i've never met anyone that truly just collected baseball in canada yeah so the next thing um, that i want to talk about was like your pitching career like what lessons have you learned like this might like the minor league system is built to develop players and bring people up and you know teach them more about themselves and about the game of baseball like what lessons have you learned from it um you have to definitely trust yourself and i don't mean that as in like you got to think you're the best you got to be confident you have to trust yourself in if you have a bad outing it doesn't define the year and if you have a great outing, it doesn't mean you're going to continually have success. So it's basically like trust yourself and trust the work that you're putting in that will produce results. So it's more or less the day-to-day grind and just keeping to it and following it through and just knowing it that the other side, you're going to have improvements. I would say it was the number one thing that I've been taught so far, especially this last year. I didn't have the year that I quite wanted, but I mean, we made it out the other side and we had some moments of of some good outings so ready to continue it into the next year yeah you gotta just gotta keep building keep growing exactly that's all we can do exactly so i'm i'm very excited for this next question because uh as you know i'm a cubs fan so i like to keep up with all the prospects she's so gonna be good so who is the most talented player that you've played with or against Ooh, that's tough there, there's been, there's been many, uh, obviously within the, Cubs, within the within the Cubs organization, we have played with Ryan Jensen for most of the year this year, outstanding pitcher. Yeah, we had I, Brennan Day with us for a couple of weeks, outstanding mm-hmm. hitter, great outfielder. I'm, I'm very high on both of those. Brennan actually came on the podcast when I first started, like oh, yeah. he was first drafted too. Yeah, that's awesome. And then. Guys like Nelson Velasquez, he just made the 40-man roster after uh, fall ball there. Yeah, um, he was self been for a while. But, I mean, yeah, like, it's it's crazy, the amount of talent, both on our team and our organization and organizations we've played against. There's many guys that are turning a lot of heads. Mm-hmm. Must I'm be nice excited. having hope for the future of an organization. Must be nice. I'm a Rockies fan. I'll just say it. I'm a Rockies fan. It's not... Not much to look forward to, my friend. Not much to look forward to. Oh, I'm sure there's I'm sure they'll figure it out. There's, I don't, there's, act, don't actually know what to do. <laughs> it's about it. Um mm-hmm. so we got I mean, the biggest headline in baseball is the worst headline in baseball. The lockout's going on right now. Um, it affects you guys in a different way. I mean, not as directly, but it still is impactful. So like everybody's working to come to a compromise, but you get, you get a seat at the table and they say, okay, Tanner, this, you get one thing. You can pick whatever you want. That one thing is going to get changed permanently. What is it that happens to baseball? What, what needs to be, what do you think should be changed? To baseball as a whole, or. I mean, it can be organizational. It can be on the field. It can be just whatever, just the questions open, just whatever you want it to be. I would say just across the minor league or minor leagues as a whole, um, the off season might need to be retweaked, reworked a little bit, just because we spend five, six months at home, essentially. We still have to train. We still have to train like we're athletes, still in the gym, still have to throw, everything like that. But the financial aid at that point is stopped. So I don't know if that would mean like getting paid in the off season or what, but that would definitely this year has been my struggle, especially coming home to a winter where it's zero degrees Fahrenheit and I can't really do much outside. So I do have to pay for a gym and things like that. So 
and I'm not too sure how each organization works. The Cubs are awesome with it. Um, but yeah, I've definitely seen other people have some issues in the off season in terms of me making ends meet. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a few things to say. First off, I'm glad to hear that the Cubs aren't just uh, horrible because uh, one of my biggest problem with it has always been um, the lack of paying minor leaguers. Thankfully, now they're implementing paying for the housing, which mm -hmm. should have been done years ago, but better late than never. So I definitely see that. I always like to follow the minor leagues. We're close to the Aqua Sox, so I like to go watch games there. I just, I really like to follow the minor league aspect as well as the big league. So yeah. definitely, definitely think that um, teams need to be doing better. Yeah, we've definitely seen improvements over the last, even I've, I've only been in since 2019 and we've seen increases in pay both years. You know, they did quite a good job in my opinion over COVID. So, I mean, it, it was, it was nice to see that an organization. I didn't realize that the financial aid stopped though. I didn't realize that stopped during the off season. That's shocking yeah. to me. Yeah. We don't get paid in the off season. Yeah. That's, that's definitely a problem. Um, so our last question is, uh, what is your biggest goal in your career? Ooh. I mean, obviously the goal is to play in the MLB, but, but I mean, if we're talking like end game goal. Yeah. I, I would love to see my Jersey and, in like a, a shop somewhere that isn't at the field just to be able to be a part of a community where like that player has contributed to it. I think that would mean a lot. Yeah. So I think, I think that would be my end all goal would be having my Jersey in like a mall somewhere and it being like a reason people are brought together for baseball. Well, I can get, I can guarantee you this. Um, if your Jersey's ever at the stadium or a mall, I'll definitely have one if it ever does when it does. Appreciate that. But honestly, I'll probably have a custom one made when, uh, I get to a point where I can start getting jerseys more consistently. I I I love sports jerseys; they're my favorite thing to wear. That's awesome. So I'll definitely get one of you as soon as I can. That's awesome. I appreciate that. Add it to the list. Write that down, Justin. Put it put it at number like fifty seven. I, somewhere I in do there. have a list on my on my notes app on my phone. I have a list of players of jerseys I want to get. So I will add it to the list. <laughs> Uh, that's all for this episode. Thank you so much for coming on. We really do appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Thank you all for who are watching. Uh, we'll see you next week.